I'm here at the U.S. Weather Bureau station in Cape Hatteras with uh, Lamar Tate with the National Park Service. So, Lamar, why don't you tell me a little, little bit about this building behind us? Well, this building is the first purpose-built structure on the site for the Weather Service. Now, the Weather Service was actually out here as early as 1874. Uh, the, the Weather Service started under the Army Signal Service in 1870, and that was during the administration of Ulysses Grant. And uh, they were actually down on Hatteras Island in 1874. They started at the keeper's quarters of the lighthouse. So the keeper there actually did a little bit of double duty for a while. Uh, it wound up moving to the life-saving station, and then it was in a private residence for a while. And they actually built this structure in 1901. And like I said, it's the first purpose-built structure uh, for the weather department. It was actually built to house the, the weather, weather observer's family, has his workstation up on the second floor, and it had a deck abo above that uh, for instrumentation. So most people nowadays are familiar with the National Weather Service, but could you, could you tell me a little bit about the predecessor, the U.S. Weather Bureau? Okay, well before the weather, before the Army Signal Service began weather operations, uh, there were other people in the past that did this. Uh, Thomas Jefferson is a well-known one who was real big into the weather. He actually noted that it was 76 degrees uh, up there in Philadelphia while they were signing the Declaration of Independence. Kind of a neat thing. Uh, Benjamin Franklin's another well-known guy who was kind of into the, into the weather. Uh, but after those guys, uh, up around 1848, the Smithsonian was involved in trying to collect weather on a large scale. And in 1848, I think they had around 150 volunteer observers in different parts of the country. Uh, within a couple of years, he had about 500 observers uh, sending information to the Smithsonian. And uh, they had uh, uh, managed to negotiate free telegraph time for those weather observations to be sent back to the Smithsonian. So kind of a neat thing. However, if you want to do something on a very large scale, uh, what do you need? Another government agency. And that began in 1870 under, under President Grant. So what would the life of an observer have been like who worked at the station here? The weather keeper would have had his family out here. He would have been working all day. Uh, he, there, was a, there were other people here. He had a maintenance man uh, attached to, to this weather station. Uh, he would have made recordings uh, or ob observations, I guess, uh, every hour. Uh, he would have transmitted by telegraph three of, a, three of those observations up to the main office in Washington, D.C. And from that place, forecasts would have been issued three times a day and sent back out to all the observers, the railroads, and any media. And if you're here at the Outer Banks and interested in visiting the Weather Bureau Station, it's located just off Highway 12 in Cape Hatteras.